Hello, my name is Tim Myers. I'm the executive chef here at the Preserve at Boulder Hills in Rhode Island. And today I'm gonna to share with you one of my favorite dishes, it's risotto. And we'll be flavoring it with a little bit of New England lobster today. So first let's talk about the rice. This is a short grain of rice as opposed to like basmati or jasmine, which is really long grain. Um, these short grains of rice have a lot of starch on the outside, which is really important for making that nice creamy sauce that we end up serving the rice in. That's why this is a nice creamy wavy dish on the plate. So always make sure you get this Arborio or Carnaroli. Those are two really great varieties of rice to use for risotto. Take advantage of this opportunity to infuse the rice with as much lobster as you can by using a really nice lobster stock. So what I'm gonna start with, like I do most days, is with an onion. This is a Spanish onion. You can use a white onion or a Vidalia onion. It doesn't matter. I'm gonna make a cup of uh, dry risotto today, which is gonna actually yield four cups of finished risotto. Um, so for this, I'm gonna use probably just half of an onion will be fine. I like to take the center green parts out. They tend to be a little bitter when you, when you cook them the way we're about to cook them. Uh, and then I'll just make these nice and small. We would call this a brunoise or a brunoise cut um, in classic cooking. It's, the idea is to mimic the size of the rice. So it's just really small. Okay, so do your best to get as much out of that onion as you can. And you can see that that half of an onion gave me about half a cup of finished product. This container holds one cup. Garlic makes everything better, so I'm gonna put two cloves of garlic in there. And again, I'm gonna, I'm gonna cut it into really small squares like a brunoise. You could just mince it, chop it up. Um, I like the flavor a little bit when you leave it a little chunky. So again, just match, match the size of the garlic with the rice. And I cut the clove in half and then just make a couple incisions across the way. And then just go back the other way and I've got really nice little cubes of garlic. I'm gonna season this rice once it's done cooking with a lot of lemon. Lemon brings a nice bright acidity. It helps replace salt. So you, I won't season this with much salt actually, but the lemon is really important because we're gonna use a lot of really nice quality olive oil, which is a fat. Fat coats your palate and uh, lemon juice or any acid really cuts through that and helps sort of harmonize both of those flavors so you can pair them up well. So I'm just cutting these lemons into segments that I can easily squeeze without worrying about dropping a seed in there. People love to see big chunks of lobster in their risotto, um, gives you some value there. But remember, the flavor from the risotto is in the rice. I'm gonna take this beautiful tail I've got here, it's cooked already. Just cut that in half. Now they're just bite-sized pieces. Last thing to do is we're gonna finish this off with some herbs right at the end. So I've got a nice little selection here. This is just some thyme, which I'm just gonna take the top of and gently sort of strip the tiny leaves off so I don't have to worry about the stem. And then these are, of course, chives. They give a really beautiful flavor and a really beautiful presentation. We'll sprinkle some into the risotto and we'll probably sprinkle some right on top as well to give a little contrast. Okay, and that should be plenty there. I'm just gonna run my knife through the rest of these herbs just briefly, just to break them open a little bit to help, help get some of those essential oils out into the rice once we've started cooking. And then I can mix all those together. It's one part rice, so whatever your measurement is, keep it consistent, but it's one part rice. Remember that's Arborio or Carnaroli rice. Okay, so that's one cup. So I've got everything I need here. All my mise en place, as we say, is ready. I've got a little bit of Parmesan cheese. I'm just gonna finish it a little bit to help thicken the sauce at the end and add a little bit of extra depth of flavor. It's not just salt, but it's savory. So with our ingredients now, we gotta turn to the stove and take a look at how to really prepare this risotto with the correct technique. First thing I'm gonna do is turn on my heat. I'm gonna put it at about halfway, right? Medium heat. I got some really nice quality extra virgin olive oil here. 
I'm going to put a decent amount of that in the pan. That's going to help cook everything evenly, quickly, but it's also going to add a great flavor and it'll also really benefit us to have all that olive oil at the end when we go in and try to emulsify this sauce to really finish the risotto and bring everything together. So it's about that much olive oil. I would say that's probably half a cup, pretty decent amount. First thing I'm going to do once that's warm, which it's getting there, I'm going to add some onions and the garlic. Okay, so remember half a cup of Brunoise onions and maybe a tablespoon of chopped garlic. Stir that around. I want to make sure everything's coated in that nice peppery, grassy olive oil. Okay, everything's sizzling a little bit there. I'm going to add just a pinch of salt, not to season, but to help bring out the uh, moisture in the onions and the garlic so it'll soften them up quicker. Hopefully you can see there's some, there's definitely extra olive oil in there. That's good because the next part is really key to risotto. We're going to parch the rice. So there's no liquid in here yet, but I'm going to add the rice. So those onions cooked for about a minute. I'm going to stir the rice in so it's all coated in the olive oil. And I'm actually going to cook that. I'm going to toast the rice um, for about a minute here. All right. So that's, that's what we're looking for. Now everything's nice and warm and I can add my lobster stock. Now you just want to bring that liquid up to a simmer, not a boil. If you boil it, you're going to lose some of the liquid, right? When it boils, it evaporates. It goes up and out the hood, out the roof of your home. Okay, so our rice is cooked. It's about 90% of the way done, and that took just about 20 minutes to get there. It's got a little bit of texture right in the center, um, and it's got a little bit of liquid really left in the pan. So you can see I didn't really stir it at all during the cooking, but now is the time when I finish this risotto that I'm really going to stir it because I want to shake off all that starch we talked about in the beginning so that the, whatever liquid is left in there thickens up a little bit. Now I'm going to add a little bit of liquid and seasoning in the form of lemon juice here. I'm going to add a little more olive oil because I love it. And like I said, that lemon juice, the lobster stock and the olive oil are going to combine into this really rich, beautiful sauce. I'm going to add the lobster meat in. Um, it's fully cooked, but I, I need to warm it up. And the rice is warm, so in the next minute or so, it'll get, get right to where it needs to be. I'm going to add almost all of my herbs. Remember, I want to save a little bit just to garnish the top. And then I'm going to put just a smidge, call that a tablespoon, a teaspoon of grated Parmesan cheese, right? So now the trick is you really got to beat this up. Don't be afraid of smashing it up against the side of the walls. You don't want to break any of the kernels of rice, grains of rice, but you really want to kind of shake the pan, get the spatula in there. This is going to force all of that liquid and all that olive oil to really emulsify. And you can see now it's got this beautiful sort of sheen and glisten all over the rice. It's that beautiful orange lobster color. There's meat studded in there for texture. And then I'll just top it off with a few more of these herbs. Okay, here's our final product, lobster risotto today. Uh, thanks so much for tuning in. I hope you have a chance to enjoy this at home and we'll see you here next time at the preserve.